Understanding the coronary sinus anatomy can help you uh, in your approach to coronary sinus cannulation. If you approach the uh, coronary sinus from the right atrium and you have a prominent eustachian ridge, uh, then that can block your entrance to the coronary sinus. If, again, if you approach the CS from the right atrium and you have a valve, uh, then the Thebesian valve can block your entrance to the coronary sinus. On the other hand, uh, if you drop down the annulus, then the ridge and the valve uh, direct the catheter into the coronary sinus. So why is this relevant? Well, if you use a, a catheter that has a large curve on it, and the tip of the curve takes you above the coronary sinus uh, and is on the ventricular side of the eustachian ridge, then when you apply counterclockwise torque, the first thing it'll go, the tip will be directed posteriorly, but then with additional counterclockwise torque, the proximal section lifts up and the tip of the catheter drops along the tricuspid annulus. If the CS is high, the posteriorly directed tip drops into the coronary sinus and the ridge and the valve tend to direct the tip uh, into the coronary sinus. How this works depends on the shape of the catheter and size of the right atrium. If the tip of the catheter, uh, if the shape is not proper, the tip of the catheter can start on the wrong side of the eustachian ridge uh, and, and below the os of the uh, coronary sinus, and when you apply counterclockwise torque, it just takes it away from the CS. In most patients, the shape of the standard curve, Worley sheath, places the tip above the coronary sinus and on the ventricular side uh, of the eustachian ridge. With markedly enlarged right atrium, the extra wide curve of the jumbo places the tip above the coronary sinus and again on the ventricular side of the eustachian ridge. So this is just an example. Uh, we have uh, the sheath in the coronary sinus, or excuse me, have the sheath in the right ventricle, and we're going to advance the braided core until the tip of the braided core reaches the tip of the sheath. And then from here, we withdraw the sheath, exposing the braided core, and then we apply counterclockwise torque to the braided core, directing the tip posteriorly, and then maintaining the counterclockwise torque, the braided core and sheath are gradually withdrawn as a unit, dropping the tip. I hope you saw that tip drop. When the tip dro stops dropping, a puff of contrast is, is injected to confirm the location. And usually, if there are no uh, side branches, uh, that engage the braided core, we just advance the braided core into the coronary sinus um, and then advance the tip of, and advance the sheath uh, over the braided core. I hope this helps you understand coronary sinus cannulation and why the shape of the catheter is so important to successful cannulation.